All right, welcome back to Blatheria, episode number F. <laughs> <laughs> episode uh, F. F. For we, we don't forgot. remember anyway. Uh, I, I'm John Caparulo, and I'm Brian Shenanigan. Good to see you. Uh, it's uh, so it's been another week. Um, thanks for thanks for coming by. Yeah, we're what, uh, uh, what, we're, uh, we're live from my spot uh, today again. Um, we we had, you you ran we got a new dog downstairs because you know we went a few weeks without. Acquiring a new another pet. Yeah, like we, we constantly have to add to our livestock. It's so, a good-looking uh, yeah. dog, though, man. He's it's, a good. Yeah, he's he's good. He's gonna be he's big. Good. Yeah, he's he is. He's, well, that's I'm. I you know what I was always uncomfortable with big dogs before you know like, but I you know now that I you know with a family to it's it, you know when I'm not when I'm on the road or whatever it's like I like yeah he's uh, um, a little deeper bark than what you got right, going you know <laughs> yeah it's like it, it, he'll really uh, you know he'll make somebody shudder. <laughs> so yeah yeah i i but he's he's a he's a he's a good dog. he's a i i definitely i see they you know because we can you give when you get a dog from like when you adopt a dog like they always try to they get, give you some half-ass guess as far as the breed you know they'll be like oh they get yeah i think i think he's he's uh he's chihuahua and shih tzu and he's like <laughs> Dude, but he's 700 exact, pounds what are you talking about exact like what are you fucking talking about and uh like uh, what with the, our, our uh, the little dog we have Twinkie, uh, Twinkie they told us she was a Papillon, which is this really little like uh, like purse dog, and she's a Corgi. Like what the fuck are you talking? Have you ever like have you people ever met dogs before mm-hmm. you tell us this shit? So yeah, she's uh, but but yeah the the uh, the new dog, uh, Doughboy. He's uh, um, he's definitely I could definitely see the Australian uh, Shepherd. I, I see. I I actually do, used to do a bit like way back uh, about Australian herding dogs. Cause I remember like when we were me and my friend Timmy, we were moving to L.A. We stopped in Phoenix for a couple of weeks to live or to live with his uncle. Basically, <laughs> and, uh, we, <laughs> we almost didn't leave. But uh, uh, his neighbor, he was like house sitting for his neighbor, and his neighbor had an Australian herding dog. And I remember I I did a bit of it. And I was like, it's the smartest dog I'd ever been around. Like we're like you know how most dogs like you talk kind of. You talk dog talk to them. You know, like you want to get the ball. You want to get the ball, and you know, and they, they all they get all goofy. Like this dog, like like nodded. He's like, <laughs> He's yep. like yes, I want the yes. ball. What, will you throw it? Why, you, why I mean, do you keep asking why, me? Over I'm wearing and over a glove here. Why, <laughs> why, why are you fucking taking so long to throw the ball? So yeah, uh, uh, it's it's. Uh, I think he's got a lot of that in him. Uh, but he he seems like. Uh, he seems like a, a good boy, and uh, he's uh, I you know he likes that I make burgers for everybody late at night. So yeah, uh, yeah, I think he's I think he's realizing oh I found the right spot. Another, so. Yeah, another one on the old on the old barbecue at night, huh? Yeah, yeah. Another I mean, patty on. Yeah, if there's <laughs> such thing as re- reincarnation, you want to come back as as one of our pets because uh, yeah, you lead a good life. So it's good it's, eating. You eat well. Yeah, you eat well. Nice. Not as well as I do, but you eat well. <laughs> Almost actually, you might actually eat better. Um, cause, uh, Jamie gives a shit about your health and, uh, <laughs> I, I, she cares about mine, but there's nothing she could do about it. So <laughs> she has, she doesn't get to feed me in a bowl anymore on the floor. So yeah, it's, uh, I, I finally stood up for myself. That was anyway. a rough couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A couple. It was, uh, um, but yeah, we're, we're uh, so. Uh, uh, everything good with you? Everything? Oh, Cap. I did, uh, I did the anime comedy hour at the anime oh, convention right. over the weekend. How did that go? About as bad as, as you can think about of an 11 a.m. show would. can go. <laughs> yeah, like, uh... I mean, about as well as an 11 a.m. comedy show can go? Uh-huh. What the fuck? That's awful. Like, oh, I, I, man. Were there people there? Not at the start. I, when I started the show, there were right, five people. Right, no right. chairs. And then no, find, chairs? no chairs. No Well, they probably weren't planning no for anybody to show yeah. up. Yeah. So why? So yeah. people finally, there was like a, a a food area over here, and some people finally started to get chairs. And then f- the other comic, the headliner guy, was actually smart enough to to go and get way more chairs. So he just started taking all the chairs from the tables and bringing them over. So by the end, we had a good amount of chairs because more people just kept bringing them over. But also, like, probably the most popular anime, My Hero Academia, had a panel right after ours. So I'm pretty sure that was why it was full by the end, because everybody wanted to get there. And I know that oh, because so they, they were, were coming all, in for, oh, gotcha. They were all, all right. dressed, they were all dressed uh, like the characters from the show. And I'm like, yeah, they're not here for the comedy. Damn. 
Oh man. But That's... yeah, when I started, I, it was five people, and like we did, I tried to do giveaways and some trivia stuff to try to get people to stop and come over. I think I did two actual bits. I I, I, I think I, never... I, I think I, I think I swore once, and I stared a kid right in the face when I did it. Oh, <laughs> of course. I mean, yeah, I, I never understand that. Like where, I mean, when when you're when you're booking an event like that, like I understand, like when you're booking talent. Because, I mean, I, you know, I've had, I, I mean, I, I talked about it on stage one night. I, I, I'll probably uh, do it again with uh, the with, with uh, Killing Crickets or whatever. But, like, the whole, when I did the, the, the Ronnie Law, the Ronnie Lot thing, mm-hmm. the, the, you know, the celebrity golf tournament outing, whatever. And, I mean, it's just not the right setting. I understand the people booking it are like, oh, we saw this guy on TV or we saw this guy at a comedy club and, Man, we really think he's funny. We would like to share that gift of laughter with all our friends at this event. But then you're putting you're putting us at an event that does it. I mean, it's an environment that instead of you know, because I mean, with comedy, first of all, you have to go to a comedy venue. Mm-hmm. First, like you, you just have to because it in order for us to to be the way we need to be, which is completely honest and uninhibited and 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 foul mouth in my case. It's like you have to be able to feel like it's your house. They came in knowing that's the deal. Whereas if you have us participate in an event that doesn't like it doesn't necessarily welcome any any of that, or maybe all the people there won't welcome that sort of thing, then now you just brought us in to ruin your good time. We're we're there to ruin your party and upset people, and and that's not. <laughs> that's not what you want out of it, is it? And it's always like, I, you know, there's so many times when somebody will, you know, they want want to book me for this or that, and I mean, I've had them where they go, oh, we love your comedy, and I mean, I I even got to the point from experience where I would, you know, anybody would book me for. I remember people were booking me for this thing was Fresno State women's basketball, because of course my comedy fits that vibe, uh-huh. and I mean, and because. <laughs> You know, because I do so many, so many pro WNBA bits, yeah. and uh, you're deep so, into it, right? And, you're a and lifelong just, fan. They brought me to that, and, and I remember them. I remember them coming to me at the comedy store after I, I got off stage in the main room, and they said, "Cap, we wanted to book you for our banquet last year. You were on the road. We want to get you there this year." And they were so excited. They were like two assistant coaches. They were big fans, and they were like, "Man, we got to have you come in." And I and I even said to them there at the comedy store, "I'm like, okay, hold on." You just saw me on stage here. You know what I do, right? I mean, like, that's, I cuss a lot. I talk about poop. I don't do a lot of sex stuff because <laughs> I don't have much to talk about there. So it, it was really, because this was before I met, I, my, I met Jamie or anything. It was like, mm-hmm. I was, <laughs> it was just me and my dog for a long time. So, um, so uh, you know, I, I said to them, I'm like, look, this is what I do. You're sure that's what you want at your, you know, benefit banquet, whatever for the, Women's basketball. Like, yeah, no, everybody's cool there. Everybody has a great vibe. You're gonna, we're gonna, you're gonna do great. So I get there. It's at six p.m. It's still the summer, basically. So it's fucking light out. They, they have it. They don't have a stage. They had a podium. I had a podium. Like I'm fucking, like I'm, like I'm there. Get like uh, I'm the president addressing the media or something. Like it was awful. And I, you know. I just remember, like, I'm getting ready to go on that night. I'm, they had me, like, I was sitting, like, in the locker room of, like, it's a country club. And I remember one of them comes down, like, a half hour before I go on or whatever. And it's like, hey, Cap, um, <laughs> you know, uh, I know we Notes. talked about this before. <laughs> yeah. Like, but our athletic director's out there. And can, can you maybe cut back on a few of the F-bombs or whatever? I'm like, you motherfucker. <laughs> like, we talked about this shit. Like, why... Why would you hire me to do comedy, oh God, but I man. can't do my comedy? Like, I, there are plenty of comedians out there who are more than capable of being really funny and, and doing very well in a setting that, like, because they don't, they don't normally cuss. They don't have, they don't do any sort of, like, you know, dirty, edgy, whatever, uncomfortable material. And, I, you know, but I do. So why... Like, when you laugh at the shit that I do, why would you come back and go, I want Cap to, you know, it's like, I want I want Dan Marino to play quarterback, but I want him to throw left-handed. Uh-huh. Why? Yeah. Why would you Why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just get Steve Young? It, it, see what I'm saying? It's like, it just, it's, it, 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 
I'm just saying, I, you know, when you, yeah, know your shit when you're booking somebody for, when you're booking a comedian, especially because comedy is so personal and it's so, it's just all the elements have to be right. Music's different because music, you know, as an artist, I don't, you know, I don't claim to know what it's like to be a musician, but it just, it, it, I obviously, I know that it's obviously easier than what I do. <laughs> I mean, you know, but I mean, with, with music, you can kind of, you know the, uh, the 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 actor or the I mean the the artist the performer doesn't have to you know, you can sort of wall yourself off behind mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. art you can stand behind your music and just let your music speak and you don't really have to have any other back and forth or interaction with the audience and comedians we do we have to have you know you like you're it's it's all out there and it's like it just it is not you know it it yes it is it's very funny when it's in the right setting when it's not uh you know police get involved and it's not the <laughs> or or i start crying uh, in front of hall of famers but, it's really it's not a good scenario either way so but it was the, so it was originally at 130 it was at 130 yeah it was at 131st but then they when they actually announced the schedule it was at 11 a.m. instead okay, okay and it was outside but now luckily it was inside Okay. So, uh, but, <laughs> oh, that made all the difference. Huh? <laughs> but man, like I Which just, it does. Mm. I just, I didn't even know what to do. I did two bits, yeah. you know, and I had a couple more nerd things. But I'm just like, I'm like, I don't want to feel bad about myself for this material. So, Jesus. I'm like, let's I, do another giveaway. Let's do this. I tried. It was. I was trying to engage people further away to come over. You know, I was the host. Oh yeah. I had the host. I didn't just do a set. I was the host. Yeah. Well, I did you the, can't I did just the, do a set. I did the scenario. whole thing. Yeah, like, yeah. You know. I so. Mean, that's 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 uh so it really yeah it just but, does it puts you in a no win situation then i introduced the middle guy who rolled in off of a vegas night you know what i'm saying no sleep whatever he tried to actually do a real comedy set which i'm sure <laughs> i heard some of it you know but like that was the thing too our sound was so bad like people couldn't hear us even like that far away and the sound guy could have gave a fuck. He had his feet up. They don't care. Union oh, yeah. job. You know what I'm saying? He did not. He's like, I gotta be here for seven more hours. That I Fresno don't care. thing I did with the podium, I I remember like that's what got me out of doing. I think 45 minutes or whatever they wanted because I walk up there and as as soon as I talk, like you know, hi, I'm. It just the whole the mic just went, Meow! like just this big feedback. So <laughs> not only was there this really loud, obnoxious man up there cussing at their banquet while they're trying to eat and talk to their friends <laughs> it's going wow like the whole so yeah oh, they don't give a fuck no it really it's no. not comedy's high maintenance people really and, and then he got heckled by a 14 year old girl and i tell you he shut that 14 year old girl down but he's like <laughs> that may have been a hate crime I don't know he's like i don't know about it, right? yeah. he's like i don't know if i should have done that yeah and yeah. but then you know then i you know went up and did another couple of few minutes and the little giveaway and then brought up the headliner and I'll give it to Eric Bell. Like he, you know, he did seat a lot of those people. He he yeah. did hustle his ass off to fucking try to get some audience. And he did, he has good family stuff. Yeah. Which would which hit a lot of the buttons for the family people. So he got some as good a laughs as you could have gotten from that. You know what I'm saying? So it was. Uh, but yeah, for your boy, start when I started off, there was five people standing there, and I'm like, hey, you guys want to do anime trivia? And I'm like, do you know anything about this? Do you know anything about this? Do you know anything about this? Uh, I'm like, no, we don't. I'm like, you're at an anime convention. Like, God, it's not, this is not my fault. Like, man, that's, that's, yeah, that's Oh, wrong. when I looked over at that phone, like, when I went over there, and it was, like, 1534, and I'm like, that's my 15th, baby. <laughs> like, oh, like, that, it was. Yeah, yeah. And so, we, you know, we finished up, and they started to set up for the panel, and I, like, walked back over, because Eric, who was the headliner, he was still working the convention. He was running the anime karaoke lounge. Okay. So, which was supposed to be in this nice room, you know, where the comedy was, off by itself in its own little thing. Right. And instead, he was in the front of the trade show hall, like, where people are getting their badges. Oh, man. So, like, there's, so you're getting your badge, and there is just some, you know, someone in a maid outfit, uh, you know, screaming, living on a prayer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and not well. And let me tell you, there were a lot of full-grown, there were, I saw a six-foot-tall, Aryan looking gentleman in a full maid outfit and he sang what you do to me on karaoke and it was very disturbing 
It was, I, uh, I, yeah, it it's will, disturbing it will, it's gonna, the story is. It's going to replace the whales really, in my nightmare. And you know what, what time saying? of day was that? Uh, that was like 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Jesus, I mean, I... I yeah. It's, just, it's, just, it's one of those things, like, you know, as a performer, you just want to, like, just bring the whole production to a halt and just look at everybody and go... Do any of us really want to be here right now? This is stupid. Like, we're really, like, why are why are we going through these motions? We all think this is ridiculous. We all see that there's fucking five people and fifty seven chairs that are empty watching my set right now. This is dumb. It'd be great and, if there was chairs. There was no. We had to move over the chairs it, it as just, the set went on. I, 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 just, I, just, I mean, I you know I've had and it's weird too. As a comedian, as you go along too, like you find it like you end up getting. Uh, a lot of times paid the most money for some of your shittiest some shows. Some of the worst shows. Because, like, yeah. you know, because it'd always be, like, you know, some corporate thing or something like that. I remember I remember New Year's one year. Um, I, you know, this was early on when I hadn't even done much TV or anything like that. And I was just, you know, I just sort of had, like, a, you know, sort of a, a you know, a little bit of, uh, I guess, recognition around L.A. or whatever. And I, I remember I got booked for, like, a... Um, it, it, it must have been a New Year's Eve or, or, or holiday party for, a, you know, some corporate thing. But I remember it was at this restaurant, and there's no stage. There was no mic. They literally, like, were just in the middle of this dining room that they had rented out. And, you're just and they made to... a circle around me. Like, I, I, I mean, like I, was a fucking, word? Like... like I was a street performer <laughs> on the pier or something. And, and the thing is, is when especially when you're a young comic and you're just like, I got to try to make this work or else, you know, words get, get around and my life is over. And, uh, you know, so, and the thing was is somehow, like in that situation, you know, uh, you make it work as best you can. It's never, it's never as good as it should be with a uh -huh. stage and a comedy club and a mic and all that stuff. But it's like, you, you know, when the times when you manage to make the best of it, I remember I... I remember Mitzi at the comedy store. I remember the comedy store got called because they would get called sometimes for like corporate events or things like that. Somebody trying to book a comic because they they take the name comedy store too literally, and uh, <laughs> they just really do. So they would yeah. call up and be like shopping for a comic, and like, they. Hey. Uh, and, and I remember I was still like I mean it was at the point where I was like you know I it, it, this was maybe two thousand two or three like I hadn't even uh, like I hadn't even gotten off the mower yet like I was still like that uh, early on and I remember. I uh, the comedy store got called and they said they wanted to have a comedian for the Kiwanis luncheon at, in Long Beach. <laughs> it was fucking I, two in the afternoon, some shit. Like I remember, I got lost too because I remember she, you know, she gave it to me. It was like a couple hundred bucks, which I desperately needed, and uh, I, and I. I remember I get there. It was another podium. I was it was before the other. It was I was at a podium, and I mean they were literally having the coffee and cake when I got there, and um, I ended up like what it ended up doing was instead I started you know trying to do my set and it was awful because I'm up there you know talking about like getting flex all on my penis and shit like that. I mean because <laughs> well, that's one of my the podium. One of my, my bits you know at the time like that. My yard sale bit, my fucking, uh, uh, my home run bit was all the, always the, the, you know, I worked at a golf course and things like that. But it was like, that, that, that stuff was always peppered with, with cuss words and, and, and just references that weren't, you know, you know, uh, uh, you know, my friend said he got a new porn. You want to watch it? Not together. That shit. Like, and I'm doing this in front of, I mean, there's like 75 year old women in front of me in the day. <laughs> they, they just finished lunch. <laughs> and I mean, it just felt fucking so ridiculous. And and oh it got God. to the point where, you know, I just you, you you just can feel like you're like this this my my set's not gonna work here. So then you have to, and that's where I you know you realize like where Mitzi maybe knew what she was doing more than you thought. Like maybe you thought like as a kid like oh she's just throwing me this because nobody else wants it or. Uh, she wants to torture me mm -hmm. or whatever, and and what it was was, you know, she, you know, she realized like uh, you need those steps as a comedian. It's never fun, like what you did, never fun. But what it is is, you know, a lot of those times, especially as you're progressing and developing as a comic, those things are necessary as far as, uh, like, figuring it out. 
Like going in that situation where comedy just should not happen and figuring it out. No. Like where it's like, because what I ended up doing was I ended up just doing like a Q&A with the entire Long Beach Kiwanis. <laughs> and, and, you know, I was able to basically like they would ask me questions and then I would like give them back a story with some punch lines and things like that. And it ended up almost being like, like I'm hanging out with, you know, like, you, you, you like, you know, my my mom and her work friends, or or my grandmother's fucking, you know, like what it was like your her bridge club meters. I like not that she did, but that sort of environment where you're just in this situation where it's like, okay, look, your convention, what you're used to doing is not going to work. So now adapt. Like, just you're gonna have to learn. Sometimes this the the script is not gonna work as a comic, and you're gonna have to make it happen. That doesn't make it any less pathetic or fucking stupid. It doesn't make it suck any less. It doesn't make it any more ridiculous <laughs> than an anime convention that knows they're not. It's 11 o'clock in the morning. They know it's not the time for a comedy show. They know they're not going to get people in. But as far as your comedic development, it is essential that you go through these really just, I mean, they're really, sometimes they're really just awful, harsh experiences that you're like, why would I ever want to do this? But it's like, you you can't become any sort of like especially in comedy like you really need to take as many losses as you do wins because if you take too many wins you get over comedy you take too many losses it'll fuck up your you know mm -hmm. it'll fuck up your psyche and and but you have to have a balance and you have to take a situation that you have every reason to lose and make a win out of it because that's what's going to it, it'll just because then when you go back to the ideal circumstances at, at a comedy club, you know, Saturday night, 1030, and you're in front of a great comedy club, that's easy as shit. You yeah. know, it's like, because it's like, now this is just comedy. And it, oh, wow, these people are awake? That's fucking great. <laughs> this, isn't, this isn't a bus station? Oh, fantastic. And it's like, that's what, made, you know, pathetic shows. And you always wonder, like, why would anybody even want to bring this in? But... The thing is, is 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 from a the the standpoint of the comedian, and I don't think that's the objective of the people at this anime festival. I don't think mm -mm. they're just trying to develop your act, or they're no, not trying no. to make you a stronger comedian. But for your sake, it's like that's all you need to get out of it. Is like, all right, I I grew from that in some way, and they um hopefully they learn not to make a book a comedy. Well, show. and dude, so, if, I, <laughs> if I if I was not involved, it would not have been this good. Right. Because and, the night, and, and the night before, when I saw how they were running the other events, because I went to some of the other anime events, they had a wrestling event there that was terrible. Yeah. Because like, I'm like, this like wrestling in the back of this convention center? Like, <laughs> oh, my God. They had, a, like, they just, it was like they had a, 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 a Japanese arcade. It was actually awesome because they had, like, 50 Japanese arcade games okay. and drums and everything. That was great. But, like, other than that, I was like, this is shoddy. Like, yeah. I was like, so I told him, I'm like, bro, once I knew there was no, all this stuff he dropped to me that night, no seats. You know, 11 in the morning, the, nobody following us, nobody going before us. There was a DJ, so nobody there to, like, have a panel already starting for us to actually have a crowd built in or seating. And I'm right. like, bro, we need to do giveaways. We need to do trivia. We need to, you need to be out over there barking to try to get people to stop. Because I'm like, dude, we're, everybody's walking by. It's a trade show. We're going to be lucky if we can hook people for five minutes to stand here. Yeah. So it was like, so, but, so I was like, I, I added all that. I even wrote a ton of, like, one-liner anime jokes just to throw out <laughs> just because i'm like i'm not none i'm like none of my stuff is gonna even my nerd stuff i'm like it's not gonna fly at 11 in the morning i'm just you know i, I, I yeah i, I, I don't basically think anybody's stuff can fly no. at 11 a.m i, 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 I yeah. basically played a ca i did a character i basically pretended i was like a like a i had a, I had a clipboard and i was like reading stuff off it like oh with the owner of a you know uh, anime car with this character on the front, you know, blah blah blah. Like I did a bunch of like crap like that that you know got little chuckles and got people to look. And I'm like, so at least I had. It's a... not getting any chuckles. Well, it was it was <laughs> the two people in the front were on board, and I was keyed. I was keyed on those fucking. To, yeah, it's like I, those every everyone else. Are, they're in the, the back. equivalent of a huge applause break in I, a regular yes, show. I saw their really I is, saw their lips uh, move in a laughter formation, and I keyed on those two people for the whole show. Yeah, those people got some giveaways. Because you, yeah, like, again, like, there's <laughs> no reason whatsoever to succeed in that scenario. No, uh -uh. But if you get any sort of success as a comedian, it does. You take that with you. Nobody should ever enjoy that mm -hmm. while it's happening. Anybody who tells you they enjoy shitty experiences like that is fucked up. Okay, because that's not the that you're not normal. Like it, it's it's you should hate that situation that is 
imminently hateable. It's, it's just, there's nothing, there's no way else to put it. But yeah. It, but you later you you realize, oh wow, you know, it's kind of like the fucking Karate Kid with the fucking wax on, wax off, where you're like, why am I doing this? My shoulder hurts. This is bullshit. And you're like, oh wow, I can block everything. Now that would never happen. But I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> But the point of that is, is yeah. yeah, you do. No, it, you end up like, oh shit, I grew from that, and I had no idea. So, but I was planning it's, it's, on going it's, it's, and like hanging important. out at the Expo after and playing some games and you know looking at some stuff. But after that, I was just like, I just want to get the fuck out. That's of how here. I, I'm, yeah. like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to yeah. mill. I don't want someone to be like, hey, I saw you in the comedy show. But I don't want, it's, I don't even yeah, want that. I never, at that's all. why I never do. I've never done. I've wanted to do anything like a cruise ship or anything. But I've always been, you know. Especially even when I do well, I've wanted to go home too. But it's like I, especially when I fucking if I have a shit show, I bomb. I'm gonna get the fuck out, and I don't want anybody like yeah. It's like I. That's the last thing I want to do is like have somebody run into me and like you know say oh hey I thought you were funny oh really because I there were five of you there I'm sure I would have seen you not laughing you know so. I, it's, 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 uh, yeah, I, I never, but see, some, there are a lot of, uh, you know, comics that I've, you know, been forced into situations like that with where they're my ride and I end up, got I gotta stay in some place where I, so I basically gotta just sit in my own shit and stew. for fucking hours mm-hmm. or in some case days, fucking Lake Havasu. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> awful, awful situation. But uh, yeah, it's all, but it's all shit that like, you take with you on the journey that you're like, and then you look back and go, wow, that was actually really necessary, but, you know. But no, we, we all, before the show started, when there was nobody there, we, like, all the three of us comics got together, and I'm like, all right, guys, like, you know this is going to be an experience. It's just a matter of it's a story we want to tell, or, <laughs> you know, or not. <laughs> but no matter what, we're going to just go through it, and the hour's going to pass, and it's going to be over, but it yeah. was still like, we all knew we were going to eat a shit sandwich, you know, it's just how big of a bite we took. It mm-hmm. is. So yeah. It was. Uh, oh, it was an experience. Yeah. Well, that's that's always it's it's always the objective of any show mm-hmm. is to come mm-hmm. away going, oh, it was. An experience. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cap. Well, that brings us to some stories of the week All here. Right, Should we get do, into it? Should we get into stories? it? Stories, yeah, man. All right, let's get into the news here, guys. So I'm going to put this up on the screen. This is from our friends at NBC News. We actually went to the mainstream. Uh, Yeah, all our friends there, yeah. Yes. (laughs) Charges against Alec Baldwin dropped in the fatal rust shooting. Oh, thank God. Have you have you uh, have you have you watched any of this like from the from the jump? Like, have you been on? I mean, this, this uh, is what happened. This is what happened to Brandon Lee. Yeah. I mean, it It was the same shit. It's a stunt thing gone wrong. And they're they're talking like because what they're because they're saying that the like. The the PA or whatever, like the twenty two year old girl who was technically responsible for, you know, getting the the, the gun or whatever ready, uh, she's still facing charges. Of yeah. Course. Oh yeah. Of course. Yeah. I mean, let's let's lock her up. I mean, you know, I mean, the the guy who's responsible for the whole thing, Alec Baldwin. But I mean, come on, what are we gonna put him in jail now? Of course not. We can't hold him responsible. We gotta finish I mean, this because, movie. You know, because I mean, I can see why that would be a problem. You know, like you know, because when you're on a movie set, you know, and you have guns that shoot blanks, you know, well, you still want to have some real bullets laying around just for the sake of confusion. What the fuck is that there for? Like, why? It's like on the set of Jaws, they had mechanical sharks. They had three different. Ones. They didn't have a real one. Just, in, just, in, just, in, just here in they, case for in between scenes for us to play with. Like, just, what the fuck is we that? We just there keep for? this one around, Chief. We just keep it around. Right, right. It's just, it's just, it's just there. You know, just uh, he's there for. He's a consultant. We yes. just have him there to talk to about shark stuff. Like, what the fuck is? Why are there bullets there? Why yeah. at all are there? Why does the gun even fucking shoot bullets? Like, yes. why is it a toy? Like, why do we have, it, you could put a sound effect, you could put a CG fucking smoke puff, and, and we're done. This is a 1974. I mean, I it's a fucking, it's, it's a much easier situation now to to uh, to put a, a, a gun in there that's not a gun. And why are you aiming in it, people? <laughs> like, why? Like, if you're shooting on the set, like, why? First of all, why are you standing in the way? But second of all, if there's somebody in front of me and I have a gun that could potentially shoot bullets, why am I aiming it at your heart? Like, why? Why yeah. is it? Why is it aimed at why you? Why are we like it, all these the years fuck? of movie magic? Like, where? Why are you? You know what I'm saying? Like it, angles and depths and right. like, why would you ever have a chance? Why is it to injure it, that person? There's, there's no way that should even be a fucking possibility. Like, there's no. There's absolutely 
no reason whatsoever for you to have a, a bullets or like there because they said they were mixed in with the blanks. Yeah. Yeah. Like why do they even look the same? Why, yes. Why is that even a possibility? I mean, never mind the fact that you put a twenty-two-year-old kid in charge of this and go, "Oh, I'm sure it'll be fine." No, it's like what? Why is that? I mean, why is that? There? And like, I mean, like, how did that go down on the set too? Like when that guy got shot. Like, did everybody get, I mean, was there a moment they're like, ah, he's get, he's not, he's not getting up, fuck, you know, like, why, I, just for that to even, uh, for that to even take place is just, it's, it's absolutely not, it's absolute nonsense that that would even take place, but it's, when you think about, like, okay, I, I, I mean, whoever this, this, because it was a, it was a man who died, right, it was a, it was, yeah. it was a guy, yeah. okay, so this man who, who died is like, okay, not only did you, you were just at work one moment and you, everything, you seemed to be, everything was fine. For whatever reason, they needed somebody to line up in front of the fucking gun that used blanks. But there, you're there, you're fine. Suddenly, bam, you're shot, you're dead. You're dead for some absolute stupidity that never shouldn't even been a factor. But don't worry, don't worry. While your spirit is floating up above us and you're watching all this trend, <laughs> don't worry. Nobody's being held accountable. So don't worry. We're also saying that you didn't matter. <laughs> okay? Like, it's just, we're just, no, no. It's, I, I mean, you know, of course, of course we want somebody to pay for your death, but <laughs> not Alec Baldwin. Like, what the fuck, man? Really? Like, it's just, the guy died. I, the guy died. And we're, hey, we're and just, we don't care. And it's like, he's like, oh, he's, cause he insists that he didn't pull the trigger on the gun that he just had it in his hand and it went off. And it's like, you know, is, is, I don't, is this Rust movie a period piece? Like it, it's, I think it, are they using the old timey guns? And, and that's why. Wait, is, and so this movie, like, like the Twilight Zone movie is still going to go. Oh, they're still, they're fishing it still as we The show must go on. Huh? Like they, <laughs> no, they, they started Jesus like last Christ. week. They read, they started like, we got to finish the movie. Yeah. Yeah. That's fucked up, man. It's crazy. It I mean, I guess, I guess, okay, like, I guess the guy who died, well, I, I, I don't want to die for a movie that never came out. Fine. But I don't know, man. I, I just, I, you know, uh, it's, 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 to not hold Baldwin responsible. To, okay, like, okay, like, let's say he's not in charge of the production. Let's say, okay, I don't know if he is or not. I don't know if he's. I'm sure he's some sort of producer. He's, on yeah, he's movie. definitely he's, something. He's, he's something involved. He's some somewhere high up on this. But okay, so yeah, he's not in charge of props. Fine, but still, uh, okay, because the guy who got shot wasn't an actor, right? He's not. He's just somebody behind camera. I think. Right? I think it was just like a grip or something. Right. So, what? Again, why did you aim it at him? Like, well, why couldn't you just? Why couldn't you just in the off chance since? Since apparently between takes, you guys are putting real bullets in there and fucking what shooting fucking skeets or something like what are you what are you shooting like why do you have bullets in it and, and why do you have bullets around but it's like okay he still has there's still some responsibility there, there's a negligence there's a because it's still you still have to put a a, a a premium on human life the guy died. Like, the guy's dead now because, yeah, the PA fucked up. Yeah, you guys fucked up by having bullets around. But you aimed right fucking at him. Like, what? what I... Well, and the thing that got me is three weeks ago, they were still in full prosecution mode. Right. So then they got all these new facts, and it's just like, you know. I... <laughs> new, of course. I, I, we got, said, we got new... it's, it's... Right, right. We've, we've managed to, to rework the truth I just, a few I, times. Yeah, and... I, don't, I don't get how this deep, like where they're literally about to go to trial and stuff, that like he can, that new facts can basically be like, oh, yeah, we're going to drop this. Like, it's not like they like lessened it or anything. It's just like, oh, yeah, it was totally, totally dropped. That, that, like, that means it was. That enough facts came that showed that it was somebody else's fault, like it was this girl's fault or Cause, yeah, whatever because what it, it is. Comes down to, yeah, I mean that's the thing is like I, I you mean, know. And, and and yes, it may have been an accident in the end. I don't think anybody intended to shoot the guy. It was still involuntary manslaughter, but but yeah. it's, but you know, on the, guns go off by themselves all the time. I mean, there was just that Second Amendment dude that was like so proud of this new gun he got with a hair trigger pistol that killed himself with his you know without pulling the trigger, the gun just went off and killed him. 
And, you know, it's like, so it, guns, I, I mean, I've used uh, Yeah, I've, I've heard that I've before used where guns the gun went off. That sh- no, yeah. I've, I've used guns myself where that shit just shot. Like, yeah. Where I would, yeah, it's, 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 guns be dangerous. They are. No matter how much. They are. But I mean, end, and, it, and it really the, is. It, a, was, it, it, it was the, you know, as much as, even if it was an accident, he was holding it, he was still holding it. But it's still everything else that led up to him holding it. The badly handled, ammunition mishandled, not veteran stunt or props person on set, like all those right. other things. I mean, right. it's, just it, so, it's, 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 it's just reckless. It, 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 well, that's what I'm saying. So it was a reckless thing from end to end. So, yeah, a lot of people, frankly, in that line should yeah. be held accountable. There's a lot of people who, you yeah, they, there should be some, there has to be some accountability for it because it still comes down to, you know, it could be any of us at any of this stuff that, who gets, just gets their life snuffed out for nothing. Yeah, I just I can't imagine a situation where you'd be comfortable with it. Like, where you, okay, he's on set, he's staring at Alec Baldwin there, and he's pointing a gun at me. Whether it's I again, it should be a toy gun. It shouldn't. Be, I I don't understand how a one that shoots blanks should like. Why does it? Why isn't the fucking? Why isn't it corked somewhat? Like what the? Fuck? That's what I'm saying. I don't understand. I thought most guns that shot blanks can't fire regular bullets anymore. I thought. I thought a blank, though, like, yeah, I thought it would be, like, a different thing altogether. Like, it wouldn't be even the same type of thing. And, but still, like, why, even if it was the same type of gun, why Why is it, why is that ammunition even involved? Like, why is it there? It does, like, did you ever see a movie, uh, one of my, one of my favorite comedies, it, it, it's, uh, 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 have you ever seen Windy City Heat? Yeah. Hilarious, right? I, there's that part in there where they're, like, he play the the prank on on Perry with they're shooting a scene in the movie where it's like you know if they're supposed to hit him with a fake bat but they also have a real bat there he's like so the real bat has this stripe and the fake bat has this stripe and the guy picks up the one with the one with the wrong stripe and Perry's like it's not the right why do we even have that one and it's like it's the same thing it's like same thing. Why it's do we ridiculous have that? why is that even a factor it it's it's awful man it really is awful and I, I just. There has to be something that says that we don't just just move on and go. Well, you know that guy's. We'll we'll punish this kid, you know, or you know whoever was, you know, we'll 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 put it on the lowest person on the totem pole, the person who's got the who's making the least amount of money, who's the. It's just the the one who's the 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 least amount of an adult there. Just a lot of people are responsible there, and the guy died, and I think there has to be well, some but, sort of... I mean, even Alec Baldwin, it's like, you got to think, dude, like, that would fuck me up if I was just literally, like, somebody handed me a prop gun, and it went off, and I killed somebody, and it was in my hand, like, that would fuck me yeah, up. Yeah, like, that that's the thing, is, like, I, where, where I would just, you know, I would, I don't know how, like, I don't, I definitely couldn't just, and maybe this is why, like, I'm not where, like, somebody like Al- Alec Baldwin is, where it's like, I don't know how well I could move forward. I don't, I definitely wouldn't feel good about, you know, an article coming out on NBC News saying, you know, <laughs> it's fine. Cap's good. Yeah, he can, he's, he can go on. He's fine. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen. Nobody blames him for shit. Like, I would feel so guilt-ridden from that that I... Like, I don't know how I could move forward. And, like, because well, what I'm saying is, like, I'm not somebody who's going to be, like, I would be happier if, like, you know, like, I, I, like, this is why I hate the idea of, like, this whole crime and punishment thing where you're, like, okay, well, somebody did something and now they got to go to prison and they got to be in, they got to be locked down. They got to be in pain and agony. And, you know, when somehow, like, I hate when people are, like, they act, they feel good from that. Like, where they're just, like, oh, I'm so glad that that bad guy is, is is getting what's coming to him and it's like why 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 does that make you happy that somebody's you know somebody's now miserable. being punished and yeah. it it's like what what does that what's that do for you so i'm not somebody who's like oh i need alec baldwin or whoever else is in charge of this production to be punished or to be hurt or to be inconvenienced or anything like that i just think that there needs to be some sort of recognition that this guy mattered and you fucking killed him. I you you did. So there has to be some sort of accountability. Whether that's you know, you know well, it's, like it's said, just so hard. Whether it's a you know civil some sort of civil lawsuit, coming. wrongful those are, those death thing, coming. like yeah. I yeah. mean you know because nothing's gonna bring the guy back. No. You know as as it as, as it never does. You know, but 
It just, it just it's it's horrible, and I really I I hate that you know like why even like why why rubbing it is the guy's family's face too by making this a big like why can't you just go okay we're not there he's escaped charges but let's not put a big fucking headline out of course we are we're gonna put a big headline and say yeah nobody's gonna do shit to Alec Baldwin even though he shot and killed the guy and this this guy's family's got to see that go wow. Huh. Well, so, so not only did it hurt losing him, now we got hurt. But that's the point why they that do shit. that story because it stirs up both sides where people are like, "Oh, it's, it's good it's, he got off," and other people are like, "He shouldn't." You know, said that this is what our news has come down to, where it's you know, it's these clickbaity kind of. Yeah. It's unnecessary. You know, this should be like a page seven like sub thing. Right. Not right. Like, I mean, we. we this we, was we, headline. We should. We should. Uh, we should have more class than this, but uh, we we don't and never have. I mean, like, so 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 fucking old people out there think, oh well, we used it. No, you didn't. You didn't either. Okay, you were terrible too. Okay, so just just so I can get a dig at the elderly before we move on. All right. Uh, comedy podcast, you guys. Comedy ah, podcast. Whatever. <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on to the next story, Cap. You ready for this one? A little lighter palate cleansing. Uh, that's, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> that's always Florida. I'll just say it's always Florida. So uh, I'm going to put this up on the screen. This is from our friends at CNN Business. Uh, panic buying causes widespread gas station clo- closures in southern Florida. Well, yeah, okay. I mean, you know, it's 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 certainly unusual for uh, any sort of craziness to happen in Florida. It's unheard that's, of. I mean, because yeah. nobody's ever heard of that. What the fuck is wrong with Florida? But, uh it, it's it's I, I mean when I read this uh, this article or whatever when, when they talked about the, the whole thing is caused because of like flooding mm-hmm. like they're, they're 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 experiencing flooding or they they've got floods coming or whatever and so it caused widespread gas closures because all these people were basically stocking up on <coughs> gasoline they were toilet papering it which they were, they were that's yeah. where I, that's where I don't I just I don't understand. The correlation there, like I don't like where you're like, okay, it's gonna flood, you know. It's like, oh shit, there's the water in the living rooms up to my fucking, it's up to my shins. We need gas. Yes. Like, why, why would why would that be the thing that you would go to? You'd like, oh, we better go get some fuel. Like, I don't, I don't understand how that correlate i don't know that doesn't uh well, it's for your generators for your all your whatnots to keep yeah stuff going, okay you know? like well, yeah, yeah generators it's like when your sense. house is under six feet of water you don't want to put electricity into that thing. right i'll be yeah you know, you know what, what? Like, maybe i do understand because i'd be i'd be the first one pissed off if yeah as soon as i lose i can go through any disaster situation as long as the wi-fi doesn't go out if the wi-fi goes mm-hmm. out or if i don't have fucking air conditioning if i get if I'm made the least bit uncomfortable, I'm not, I get upset, and so yeah, because you should see me when there's a power outage. I'm I'm not good to be around, especially in Vegas, especially because we've had, we've had them a few times, like mm-hmm. power outage, fucking July, hot as fuck, and like I mean I gotta be cooled off. I'm a fat guy. I need to be cooled off, and I need to have my I need to have my obviously the electricity. I need to be cooled off, and I need to have my Wi-Fi. And as long as I have those things, I I can ride out the apocalypse. I'm uh-huh. good. But if those <laughs> things go, I I will I will get he very. He will murder uh, you for I, them. Yeah, I'm gonna. I might show up at your house to eat your brain. I don't know. It's, 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 it's that sort of thing. He so goes real Mad Max gets, real quick. It gets yeah, it gets deal. I go I go from zero to fucking eating brains real quick if fucking uh, if I don't have my creature comfort. So yeah. That's uh, that's where I stand. You on that. devolve into a simpler language. I where you're do, just yeah. Like, right. Wi-Fi. You have Wi-Fi. I need Wi-Fi. Yeah, man. I become that guy. AC, AC, Wi-Fi. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, hell yeah. But it's, have it's, you have you ever seen people like? Has this ever? Have you ever actually been in a place where somebody's stockpiling gas or doing that stuff? Um. No, I mean I remember when when like when when the the you know the pandemic shutdowns first happened in twenty twenty when we were all toilet paper buying right hard, like I, when I hard. went to when I go to Walmart and it was just like the whole like it, like a bomb went off like mm-hmm. where you're just like what the fuck happened to stuff like you could see the shelves mm-hmm. and it's like what the Jesus and so that's the only comparable situation I've so, been in like that yeah. so I did hurricane response for a few years okay. like coming out of college that was like my first job in satellite and stuff that I did so like. 
I have seen what these they it's they don't come with ten gas cans, bro. They come with pots, pans, oh, assorted so jugs. Just filling whatever, right? They're just filling whatever right. in the back of a pickup truck. Smoking a cigarette the whole time, you know what I'm saying? Like it's like, like they, like I said, they they come and they're just filling up everything in their house, like with, with gas. Like it's just it's crazy. It's because you know because all the gas cans sell out real quick when people start the hoard, you know. So those are the first things gone are the gas cans. Yeah, I guess so. I and mean, then, I, you know, I, then you're then you're just doing milk jugs. I can understand the yeah, Gatorade right, bottles. I mean, yeah, like the like the, the the generator thing does make sense, but I don't. I mean. So much so that the gas stations were closed down because you have to buy a lot of extra gas to do mm-hmm. that. I, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, uh, I haven't been in that situation. I mean, I, I never understand the whole, you know, because I remember we did that to a degree. Like, because, you know, like when the, the pandemic shutdowns happened, you just didn't know, like, well, how long is it going to be? Or, like, are they going to run out of certain shit or whatever? So you would be like, you know, well, I'm going to stock up on this or I'm going to buy, you know, an extra loaf of bread and freeze it or, you know, I guess, yeah, I mean, that stuff makes sense. But, I mean, in a situation, though, where, you know, like a if a hurricane's coming or, a, you know, it's going to be a flash flood situation, isn't most of that shit going to get washed or blown away? <laughs> even like, your storage tanks. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I, isn't that the whole problem? Well, and, and even then, uh, because of the flooding... It gets into the gas, and then the gas. The yeah, gas right. You, gas. you have watered down gas. You're yeah. fucked anyway. You so it's like yeah. So it's a, it's a twofer. So the shortages are are because people are buying it an artificial. Right. I right. mean, my grandpa, like he says till to this day, he has a a full gas like station at the house. He lives like in rural Idaho. Yeah. Like he has a guy. He, the truck comes out and fills up his shit. Like he gases up at home. Wow. You know, like that's that's always what it's been. So because they always had the generator, because their you know power was always shoddy out there. They still have well water and shit like out yeah. there where they are, you know. It's like, <laughs> and when we had the earthquake, like as if, well, they have the well under the ground. They have a, they don't have well as in. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's <laughs> fucking thing. It's still yeah. it's still pressurized. Right, but right, yeah, right, I mean, right. They, they had a problem a few years ago where they were running out of well water. Yeah, so yeah. it was like that was rough when it was getting dry. But I mean, when we when I was uh, we had the earthquake. The salt when I was in LA and we had the Selmar earthquake. I guess the nineties or whatever, like Silmar earthquake. That's, yeah. that's not the Northridge one. That was one, Northridge one, yeah. Oh, ninety four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah. it was like we had that one and uh we didn't have power for like four or five days straight. Yeah. And we had a generator. And uh and you know, and we still were just like gas, gas. Like it was the same kind of thing where we were just running out of I mean we had we had a lot of, of extra but not enough for like six, seven days. So, you know, that was that was a strange, strange time. Yeah. This brings us to uh what is I don't know why I like this story so much. Guys. I don't know why you're giggling. Because right it's, it's cause, yeah. well, because I so I'll, I'll, you'll find out as we go. Okay. But uh, this is from uh, this is uh, from I believe it's NPR. Um, a feral cat hunting contest for kids in New Zealand is scrapped after a backlash. So that, that, see, it's the last three words that bother me. There is you had backlash. to have a backlash. Like okay, if this was a story in 1952. I could see, like, like, oh, oh, all right. It's probably not nice to shoot cats. Fine, <laughs> I, 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 I can understand. Maybe, maybe, okay, but still, you needed a backlash in 2023 of people to go, hey, that's not cool. For you to finally go, oh wait, we probably shouldn't send our kid out to fucking shoot fucking cats. Like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Like, really? Like that? That before that? It made sense to you, like this was this was a this was a positive endeavor. Like, no, I'm sure it's fine. It, like when they went in 2022, I guess when they ran this thing, I don't know, was it a yearly thing? Like when oh, they no, it's a went out thing. and fucking shot cat instead <laughs> instead of you know instead of having adoptions, we <laughs> right. we just go and so, fucking. In, Elmer in, Fudd him off the fucking planet. In, right? in, in the defense of this, it, it is it is like it's a hunting club, a hunting competition for kids, and they're not just shooting like they're shooting they're shooting what is it here? Um, uh, possums, hares, rabbits mostly. Like so, it's like it's so it's but but, it's, but cats are fair game. Is that what it's two hundred fifty kill children? So two hundred fifty children last year killed four hundred and twenty seven animals. <laughs> And 
and and putting rabbits in there makes it okay. Well, I like, mean, there, at least you know that's a classic hunted thing. I mean, we, we you know we eat rabbits forever. So I know we see think the okay, yeah, ones, fine, you know, fine. Like, there, there is now. You don't. This is again. We're well past the days of the old west. We don't have to eat rabbit anymore. Okay, this isn't something that's available at the fucking at the at the supermarket. It's not, uh, you know, same with possum. You know, it, unless unless you are fucking... If you have indoor plumbing, there is no reason why you should be eating fucking possum. There's no reason why you should ever serve your family marsupial at all. Like, that's not a thing. It shouldn't be a thing at all. And it's the same thing here where it's... But, I mean, cats... That's uh, as far as I know. That's not something we we well, tend to eat. So it's a it's a New Zealand much more rural society. You know more sheep than people in New Zealand. So it's like a lot of these kids grow up like on the farm. So it is kind of a hunting kind of you know thing. You grow up on the farm. That's kind of what you do is that kind of stuff. So you know it is. We we think of cities, but there most of New Zealand is a rural country lifestyle. Like there are a lot. Of, I mean they are kind of in the sticks. They are kind of living off the land. Like I, I think they probably do eat those rabbits and possums they hunt. Because they out there are the cuts, you know. But yeah, I'm but sure, here, yeah, but I'm, sure they, I'm sure they. Here's, here's I'm sure the they. I'm sure they have sex with their sister too. Well, I mean, really, is that is that her excuse? So it's, like, not, like it's not only that. No, it's okay because these people are fucked up. There's no, a bounty. It's not. It's, it, there, what? There's a bounty on feral cats. What? Yeah, you can make up to 155 bucks a year hunting cats in a certain few months of the year there. Feral cats, I, cap, we all love cats, but feral cats are the worst thing to an environment. They kill all the birds, they kill all the stuff, and especially in a country where they have a lot of rare species and cats are not indigenous, feral cats fuck shit up, just like feral hogs fuck shit up here. So it's like, yeah, I mean, we hunt them here too. And frankly, okay, look, it's, these it's, fucking it's loose one cats th- no, look, in my it's, apartment, it's I would hunt the shit out It's one thing for the guy with the fucking, with the animal control truck to go around with the fucking net and and swoop them up and they euthanize them somewhere okay it's another thing to For take children. a bunch of 10 year olds out there with fucking with shotguns and give them trophies mm-hmm. to fucking blast trophies fucking and mittens. money and it's money a, it's it's just it's not it's not cool it's not cool it's just it's like you just and i don't mean like look i'm not somebody who's like uh you know um um i yeah i don't i'm not really uh, uh i guess i'm i don't I'm not a fan of hunting either way. Like, I, I just, I don't, I don't, I could never shoot a deer or, or a squirrel or anything like that. Like, it's just so fucked up. But, you know, I understand that there are people who do that, but I don't, I just, I just think that when, you know, it's, it's especially when it's, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't think any of them are, I'm not okay with shooting any of them, I guess. So. Well, have you ever, have you ever fucked with a feral cat, Cap? Look, okay, like the one in that picture, that looks like a bobcat, okay? That'll fuck your shit up, okay? That you, that cat's not fucking around. A fucking mountain lion, that's a, it's a different story. Those are fucking, those are big, what, those are, okay, like, so I guess if the cat, if the, if, if it's okay, now, if you're sending the kids out and it's like, okay, the kid just has as much chance of coming back with a cat pelt as he does with his fucking face ripped off, <laughs> all right, fine. Yeah. Shoot him, I guess. If he's a danger to the community, but I don't see it. If we're talking just, of, I mean, two of our six cats are fucking feral or part feral. Their mom was feral, something like that. So it's like I can't imagine, you know, either one of these two ever hurting anybody. Even they lived out in the wild. Maybe boo boo. No, we, but, you know, so like I said, once, like, I once again, we're all Idaho. My grandpa, we had like barn cats and cats that lived out in the wood pile and stuff. Those, like, we rescued one of those cats. That cat was an asshole. That was the worst cat we ever had, ever. Yeah. But, like, I mean, he had to shoot a bunch of those cats because they would get up in your shit. Like, they would, like, because the, they're feral. Did you, did you have a they're medal wild. ceremony for him at the end? Okay, that's, <laughs> right, that's, that's the thing. Right, it's the right. congratulations, <laughs> I guess I have a bounty. problem. It's the celebration of it. It's going, <laughs> it's going, it, it's saluting them when they come back from war. You know, going, God bless you, buddy. Way to, way to take out fucking mittens. You know, it's like, what the fuck? Like, why? It's not, it's just, it's a bad, it's just, it's awful. And I really think it's, uh, uh, but I, I also, yeah, I don't, I think that if you're other breeds of animal and 
you know, these people are backlashing because, like, hey, don't shoot cats. And the rabbits are like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, but it's cool to shoot me, really? And, I, you know, I don't think that's cool either. So I, I don't, you know, well, I don't know, man. You, maybe because I, got... I maybe because I don't have any crops. I don't give a shit. <laughs> but it, I don't. I, so I'm just like, look, I just, I, I love... I love animals, and I, I, you know, I just, I don't, I would, but, I just think that's awful. I, but I even here in Nevada, like, they don't catch like cats. Like, we have no fewer than, this is just on my side of the apartment complex, 10 to 15 feral cats in my apartment complex. Right. That just live, because people just open their door, and all of a sudden this cat, this, because they move and don't want the cat, and they just dump it outside. They won't come and get them. Like, the apartment complex has to trap them themselves, or that's it. And I fucking hate that. I would shoot the shit out of those cats. I hate every fucking one of them. They torment the dog. They piss on my doorstep. They get in my laundry room and piss on my laundry. And, they, like, they shit in there. They torment the dog? Yeah. What do you mean they torment them? They will come at Lando. They will come at that motherfucker. <laughs> they don't it's give a shit. Like a Tom and Jerry situation yeah. where they... They fucking set yeah. up the ironing board or no, something. No, like he'll see, he'll be head. in the bush and they're yeah. behind the bush and they will come out swinging on Lando, swinging. Like I hate those cats, and he always wants to chase them. You know, like it's oh, ugh. he's a dog. I know, but like when there's when there you can't. It's like there's some days I hate walking him because I'll see that one, two, three, four, five. You know, they just got them all wound up, and and they and the and the only way that the that animal control can pick them up is if they trap them. I, you know, I, I, you know, I'm just, uh, I guess, I don't know, maybe it's the, maybe it's the, the you know, I, I, shooting them is just, you know, I, look, if you want to go in and if you want to fucking go throw hands with the cat, you know, and you, <laughs> if you, if you choke them out, all right, I guess you win, but I, I don't, I, some cats. <laughs> but I just, I mean, that's, I, I, yeah, I mean, like, what, why don't you, why don't you stage cat fights? Yeah, <laughs> that would be hilarious. But they, it would, they just happen. I hear them. I hear them out there. I, I, yelling, I just, you know? you know, I don't know. Maybe, yeah. I, I just, I've never. I mean, I, I've dealt. I've had. I've been in a situation where, whether it's a stray cats or you know those people just let their cat out at night, which I never understood that. Like, I just that's so dangerous. You just, I mean, your cat could get killed so easily running across the street or mm-hmm. or or you know. I just I don't understand letting your animal out to just run amok at night or whatever. It's like that's like because it's not a pet now. It's you know it's just it's just some you know animal that stops by for you know for food and shelter. But you know other than it's like it's like you look outside and you you see a squirrel and you call it like yeah that's one that one's mine. Like it's not yours because you just you let him just run amok. It's weird. I don't I, I just I just I don't think like I guess. Look, if there's a if there's a certain you know necessity that goes along with like I said with animal control or something like that that they have to go out whether it's they have to sweep up you know and find feral cats or stray cats and they euthanize them or whatever because they they have to it's fine but staging a big competition where you celebrate you know like like whacking day with the fucking snakes it's it's barbaric it's fucked up and it's not something that I, I think we should move on as a species from that. Look, if there's a necessity that goes along with it, fine. But well, and apparently in New Zealand, they estimate they have five million it's feral a, cats because they have no natural predators in the wild. So they just they just a- apparently eat they do children. Well, yes, yes. But I mean, there's <laughs> enough because it's not just children. It's an adult. It's like a it's like a cat hunting season. It's the same as they have in Florida, they, where they have that boa constrictor, where they're hunting those down because those are not fair. And the same in Texas with the hogs, like you make a good living hog hunting if you can get big ones. Right. Yeah. But you know, they're but it's hogs. not cats. But it's not cats. Yeah. Right. I mean, when was the last time you know a hog purred on your lap? They don't. You know. <laughs> it's they don't. It's, Although it's, I've had a lot of fun at a county fair, but I don't think he was purring. So it's you know. It's a lot. <laughs> I love I, when they race. Yeah, you've been places I don't want to talk about. You, would you, were you doing a set there at fucking 10 a.m.? Is that what happened? The fuck? At the I, county fair? I, I just, yeah. I, yeah. Uh, I'm not there yet. Right, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be performing for the, at the, before the pig auction next next Sunday morning at 8 a.m. So get up bright and early before church. You can oh, come hear me cuss. Oh, God, dude. Anyway, all right. I think, you uh, say that, but comics fucking do that. I think we've said so. enough words. Yes, so... so. 
let's wrap it up, Cap. Like I said, I think and I'm uh, going we... to Saratoga Springs this yeah. weekend. I'm yeah. going to uh, I'll be at the Kimmel Club both Tuesday and Thursday uh, this week. Uh, the, what the uh, what is it? The 28th or wait, 27th? 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, Thursday the 27th, 27th yep. and then uh, the, tomorrow's the 25th. So yeah, um, come to Jimmy Kimmel Comedy Club. I'll also be there next Tuesday. I'll be back at Laughing Tap in Milwaukee again. Uh, yeah, uh, in, in, in May, five shows. Wow. yeah, man, I, I'll be there. I'll be in uh, Side Splitters in Tampa too. Uh, also in May, so come to that. I love that club. It's uh, uh, <laughs> love you, Florida, and uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it, 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 well, I mean, at least you're not shooting cats. Make you're sure, make sure I, he's I, got I, gas. I like that shit. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right, I, I, I won't need any gas there. I bring mine. So, um, other than that, yeah, I'm, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll be around. Uh, I'm working on the new Cat vs. Jaws, mm -hmm. uh, where we got uh, Killing Crickets, Killing Crickets coming is out on soon. deck. It's coming. And, uh, it's coming together nicely, and, 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 so be ready for that. Yeah, so stuff. All right? Stuff. So yeah. thanks for joining and us. As, and as always, like, subscribe, tell your friends, you know, uh, everything you need for John Caparulo is at johncaparulo.com. Follow the YouTube channel. Watch the shorts. Make some comments. We'd love to hear from you, unless they're dick comments. We don't want to hear that. You know what I'm saying? So, but, uh, but he reads them out. Uh, follow me at BrianShenanigan.com. Um, and uh, we're here every week. We're yeah, doing man. the blather. So we'll, uh, we'll see you guys next week. See ya. Peace.